and let's take one more here. Uh, and yeah, this one's coming in from Toonie D. An update on Catalica, the board game defeated by the sun. So we gave an update the other day to oh, that. Updates. And there's, uh, yes, this appears to be the final update. So, dear Fair Huntress in pink and Death Pressured Green. In your last podcast, you briefly mentioned Catalica, the board game which the lead developer stopped making uh, the game because the sun was harassing her. Hearing her mentioned got me interested in checking out the Kickstarter again. And what do you know? Last month, there was an update. And who boy. The first half of the update, um, it's called I Feel Like This Has to Be the Final Update, is the name of it. The first mm -hmm. half is almost sane, if a bit whiny and shitty, essentially mm -hmm. blaming her fans for being ungrateful and asking them, well, what would you do while also describing her woes with production, such as, uh -huh. such as having to replace her printer? After that, though, it goes off the rails completely. I recommend reading it in your, at your leisure, but here's some fun tidbits if you don't have the time. The reason Catalica failed was a, pl a plot by an evil cult that worships UV radiation known as the Green. While she and her tribe are followers of the pink, these two color-coded energies essentially make up the entire world. They're yin and yang, life and death, good and evil. The pink abstain from all sex and lust, while uh, with Molly wishing her tribe to reproduce via cloning. The green oh. is the opposite labeled with the color green after plant life because not only do most plants contain both male and female sexual organs, but they also take energy from her most hated enemy, UV rays. So if that's green, then why the pink labeled pink? Well, that's because of the pink fair skin, of course. <laughs> so if pink skin... If pink fair skin is labeled pink, what does that make green? What does it make green? Pat. Pat? Pat? Yeah, what's up? What's up? What does that make green? She's describing a group of people with photosynthetic properties, a type of person comfortable in the sun. Comfortable in enemies. the sun! <laughs> Black people! <gasps> because we have a higher tolerance to the sun, and our culture is full of overtly sexualized themes. Wooly, I have to ask you a genuine question. Are black people allied with the sun oh, in we'll, order to stop this board game. Oh, we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> the green, aka the black people have a higher tolerance to the sun. Their culture yeah. is full of overtly sexualized themes. That's all yeah. black culture is, right? Because black people's skin isn't full of melanin. It's chlorophyll. Black people are absorbing the energies of the... Hold on. Nope. Stay with me. They're absorbing the energies of the UV rays into themselves and giving them powers so that they can influence the world how they see fit, causing misfortune Power, huh? to, bef to befall those who offend them, manipulating the minds of those around them. What they can't... What what they can't control via UV ray mind powers, they control via oppressive woke ideologies. <laughs> you know. <laughs> like the people who told her she was fucking nuts, or the evil black family upstairs who told her to stop physically attacking their two year old child, which she totally, totally didn't do. The failure of Catalica and the ruination of her reputation and life are all a conspiracy by Big Black because she got too close to reaching a type of Christ consciousness and becoming an angelic being known as the Fear Huntress of the Garden. 
who would have opened the world's mind to corrupt powers of black people and their monopolizing of UV ray powers. Black and darker skin are, according to the celestial hierarchy, created to be a food source to be hunted, hence why the messiah figure of the pink tribe is the fair huntress. She's hunting the black people. After all, those with more melanin in their skin are closer to plants than people anyway. So it's like vegetarianism. So there you go. This Trigon fan fiction is crazy. Probably the final chapter in Catalica. All right, black people are plants made to be. (laughs) Yes, yeah. Just call me millions knives, baby. (laughs) You use my people to power your civilization on your pitiful planet. When will you learn they're beneath us, Vash? Oh, dude. I I was like, Toonie, look, you're great and all, but you're fucking lying. And so I clicked. And I scrolled. And just capturing the last couple sentences of the final update, I was greeted with the following text. I was, quote unquote, the lady who made everyone racist. I exposed that black culture was using its influence over UV to attack anything on the planet that got too close to being a fair huntress, which was the ultimate goal of animal evolution in the stellar culture. There was no chance that Catalica was going to be successful. And since we know no white or Asian people have ever turned into black people naturally, and this planet only has one race of females with its pink opposite of plant throne, you are essentially accusing me of being a normal person, a normal woman on the pink throne. You set me up to fail because you didn't want to deal with the success I already had. Goodbye, Miss Molly. There's some good stuff in there. As we know, there are no white or Asian people that have turned into black people naturally. What does that mean? (laughs) Oh, is she talking about Rachel Dolezal? That's good shit right there. That's pure. That is pure, uncut. Ain't no fucking dilute. That is uncut. That is a clean line. Oh, damn. I had actually forgotten to mention it, and I'm glad this email <laughs> reminded me. Uh, we watched um, a documentary on a cult called Love Has Won. Uh, oh, I don't know if you're I have, familiar with this. I have heard of that. Um, it's a great documentary. Yeah. It's three parts. Um, I don't want to talk too much about it, but it has some nice cult turns in it. Uh huh. Um, but there's there's a spe- there's a special moment um, that when you're particularly when you're watching or reading a documentary or any kind of breakdown <sighs> over um, cults in the United States, you're you're listening to them and they're talking about you know Mother God and Father God and you know the reincarnation of Jesus Christ and all that. And you're waiting, and you're waiting, and you're waiting, and then you get there, and then they're like, and then the Galactics contacted us. (laughs) And you're like, fuck, yeah, we're gonna, oh, we've, we've roped the fucking Galactics in on this with their cloud ships. I mean, you know, when these, (laughs) like, those, like, true life, like, stories of wild shit, like, I believe they start out. (laughs) With the conclusion just to get you in. And I, and does that one not start with a blue person? Like, I think. No, it, it, no, it, it doesn't. It ends with one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> just. Yeah. Um. Look, man. All I can say is I remember. Americans just got to put space aliens in their cults. It's dude, mandatory. When we were reporting over the years on this one infamous Kickstarter, I like I could not have dreamed that this moment of power would occur. If you Much, you know, if I'm you, glad we were able to nurture and bathe <laughs> the seedling in the water and light it needed in order for it to grow it up into this big, strong plant. Good bit. For us to pick this juicy fruit from. The bit needed to be nurtured over the course of 10 years. And I'll tell you what, 
If you see me in these streets wearing my fucking knives outfit with the full mask and everything, summoning the gung ho guns, don't ask me why, you pink. Because <laughs> now you know. I'm going to start just flexing and getting my telepathic fucking gun powers no going. Don't fucking use your UV <laughs> powers on me, man. You dare point that thing again at me, Pat? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I have to play this game. Catalica yeah. is fucking goaded, man. This board game needs to fucking exist. Like, holy shit. All right. Out on a high note, that's a podcast. Oh, that's a good email. <laughs>